I realized, I have realized through my work that all of us are just these human beings pretending to be normal in this crazy life. So many people think that their things, their things are weird. What they do is weird. What they think is weird. What they perceive is weird. And I'm here to tell you, it is not. You are normal <laughs> because there is no normal. There is no normal. There is no weird. It is, it is the human experience, my friends. You are not normal. You are not weird. You are a human being. And that is weird and normal. <laughs> so release the judgment of yourself because the things that you think in your mind that are so like, oh my gosh, if anyone ever knew this about me, what would they think? I promise you someone else has something even greater and someone else has something even greater than that. And really there's no even greater at the end of the, at the, end of the day because we're all weird. And we're all normal in our weirdness. Hello, sweet, beautiful souls, and welcome back. If you are tuning in on YouTube, we have a little bit of a different setup. I had a vision for this. Got my blanket, we're on the ground. There is something about sitting on the ground that is, first of all, so grounding. Second of all, just feels like more cozy, more intimate. We're just maybe having like a conversation, just chatting because this episode is going to be a little bit different. I did a post recently on the Instagrams talking about the 30 things that I have learned through my 30 years of life. And I thought, there is so much to say here. There's so much to say. So we're gonna be doing a whole episode as I talk about some of these things, some of these lessons I learned and continue to learn, continue to remind myself because here's the thing, these are all such an amazing reminder for me daily. I have not mastered any of these things, but I really wanted to share them with you all because the feedback that I got from you all on Instagram was so wonderful that I just know that these are such potent keys and codes to our evolution and our growth. So got my mushroom coffee, got my blanket. So let's just dive right in. So let's begin with number one. I have my phone. It's on do not disturb, don't worry, but I have all of the lessons, which I literally just channeled as I was out in nature. They just all poured through and I was like, yep, those are all 30 lessons. Um, well, I got to like 25 and then the, the last five came over the course of a few days. So the first lesson, don't take anything personally. I think this one is so key and I think it is number one for a reason. I think it is number one for a reason. Each person sees you from their lens of reality, their trauma, their baggage, their advantages and disadvantages. Some will see you as some will see what you do as inspiring, while others will see it as triggering. It's not you, it's their lens. This one is so big because I realized that here's the thing, this is why, and I think that I want to preface too, I think a lot of these are a result of doing so many sessions with people um, and really seeing the subconscious mind of so many people and seeing that there are so many lenses and views of reality and what one person sees as traumatic and what another person sees as beautiful and what another person sees as wrong or bad or good or whatever, it's totally subjective. And I really realized this um, so deeply over the years and, you know, why do they have to have so many eyewitnesses in court cases? It's because of this. It's because people literally see different things. People can witness with their eyes the exact same scenario happen. And they'll have a completely different story. A completely different story. And this is why it is so important important to not take things personally. It's so important to not take things personally because it's not you. It is their lens of reality. It is how they're viewing reality. It is how it is their traumas, their their beliefs and and how they have come to know themselves in the world and orient themselves with the world. 
It's how we all see the world. It's how we all see each other as well. That's why some people see potential presidential candidates. Why do some people see one as really good and one as really bad? It's because of their lens of reality. Like, I believe that it's not like this one person is really good and this one person is really bad. Why do some people think that one person is really bad and one person really good and the other person think really good and really bad? However, that was supposed to come out. Um, wh why does this happen? Why does this happen? It's because of our lens of reality. I think politics is a great way to look at this because it's like, I really don't believe that any of these people, it's like they're good or bad. It's like, no, they're just good based on what we desire them to be and what we believe based on our perceptions. So if someone is judging you or not approving of you, don't take it personally. If someone on on social media doesn't doesn't like you or doesn't doesn't respond in the way that you had hoped, it's okay. They're seeing you through their lens and their their limited perspective. And if they didn't receive what your heart intended for them to, it's because they weren't ready. All right. Number two. The energy in which we act and speak talks far louder, deeper, and greater volume than the actual words we emit. Words are vibrations. They are simply the carrier for our energetic transmission. We often rely on our words to convey the meaning, but it is the energy beneath the words. This one, my friends, is so big because I've been learning so much recently about language, the power of language, the power of our spoken word. But the spoken word is simply the vehicle for our energetic signature and intention. So whatever we say, whatever we release through our words, it is simply intended for our mind, for the human mind to be able to translate and comprehend what energetic exchange we are intending. There's so much in this. And so words are important. Your energy is important. But what is far more important than the words you say is the energy in which you show up and deliver them. And this can be in any situation. Can be with a person on the street, with your boss, with your partner, with your friend, with your mom or dad, the people that we know for longer periods of times, they come to know our core energetic signature. But as we all learn and grow and evolve, we become, we become more. And so we always have to set, we don't always have to, but we, we have the opportunity to set an intention. I always set the intention before these that whoever is meant to receive them, receives them fully and that they activate you and inspire you in whatever way that is supposed to be. But we have the opportunity to set an intention always and every moment. Okay. But, but the words mean nothing. If there isn't a vibration beneath them. Number three, this is a good one. I like number three. No one is weird. We are all weird. <laughs> After seeing the depths of people's subconscious minds, no thoughts phase me anymore as weird. We are all weird human beings. No one is unique in this. We just like to pretend that we are normal, whatever that even is. 
I realized, I have realized through my work that all of us are just these human beings pretending to be normal in this crazy life, pretending to be what society expects. Most people, not everyone. There are some people who are just fully living authentically themselves in every moment. And those people are the people that I love, absolutely love and, and aspire uh, myself to be more like, because I see these people who are in every moment so authentically themselves. And so many people think that their things, their things are weird. What they do is weird. What they think is weird. What they perceive is weird. And I'm here to tell you, it is not. You are normal <laughs> because there is no normal. There is no normal. There is no weird. It is, it is the human experience, my friends. You are not normal. You are not weird. You are a human being. And that is weird and normal. <laughs> so release the judgment of yourself because the things that you think in your mind that are so like, oh my gosh, if anyone ever knew this about me, what would they think? I promise you someone else has something even greater and someone else has something even greater than that. And really there's no even greater at the end of the, at the, end of the day because we're all weird and we're all normal <laughs> in our weirdness. <laughs> All right, number four, your struggle is not unique. While the experience of struggle may be unique to you, the underlying emotions we share as human beings are the same. We all just want to feel loved and accepted. A lot of people think, this is another thing that I've realized over the years in doing sessions with people is, I had this myself thinking that no one else was struggling the way we were. No one else has this problem. But here's the thing. We really, um, at the end of the day, no matter what it is, many of these problems are all the same. They're all the same because they all stem from some energetic root of not feeling enough, not feeling worthy, whatever it is. That is the main root of so many things. Desiring safety. This manifests in health problems. This manifests in relationship problems. This manifests in career problems. It manifests in so many ways. And Our problems aren't unique. The manifestations of our problems are unique. It's not the problem. It's how they express. That's a little bit different for everyone. But the core of your problem, problem, we're all the same. All human beings just seeking and desiring love. Number five, everything is energy. The more weight we put on the physicality of our world, the greater disillusioned we become. When we try and do everything in the physical, I've done many episodes. I talk about this all the time. Everything is energetic. Everything is energetic. We can focus as much as we want on the physical, but until we get that energetic root, we're going to keep seeing the same things play out in our physical realm. Also, before I move on, though, it's important to, to, to realize there's both. There's both. We have to focus on, because we still are in a 3D body, okay? So don't completely, like, go all into, that's what I did. I went all into the physical, and then I went all into the spiritual, and then I realized, oh, there is harmony with both. So, like, um, for for example, I have a friend who is dealing with some health stuff coming up recently, and she's an energy worker, and she's just been trying to do energy work, energy work, energy work, and she like was asking me to tune in, and I'm like, every time I tune in, I'm like, you just have a magnesium deficiency. <laughs> you have a magnesium deficiency. You have a magnesium deficiency, and it keeps coming up. And um, I'm not saying that that's like the only thing that there is. And, um, 
she's like, she's like my best girlfriend. She, she might be watching this and I love you so much. And, you know, I think, I think that this is such a great example because, um, healing with energy will get you very far, very far. It is the most important. But if you're still struggling on the physical plane, there's most likely physicalities that are asking you to be addressed. And I think especially in this time as we are ascending and growing, we have to take care of our bodies in a new way. And that means looking at the physical. So yes, everything is energy and and everything is also, we came into these 3D physical bodies, right? Like a practice I do every morning is I literally like, pat down every part of my body, pat it down. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Touching and remembering every part of my body. So six is related. All problems have an energetic root, health, wealth, relationships, you name it. If you don't yet have what you want, look towards the deeper emotions, trauma, and energy beneath it. So I think we covered that one. Number seven, nature heals. Nature heals, my friend. Every time I am struggling, this is such a beautiful little setup too, because you can see some nature outside, <laughs> some of my nature inside. Nature heals us. It's funny because we think that we live in, in these boxes, but nature, we are nature. We are nature. Nature does heal. So whenever you're feeling blocked, stuck, pain, whatever it is, that is always my indication I need to go and be with mother nature. And so this is my invitation to you, whatever you're experiencing that isn't favorable, bring it to the earth. Give yourself time to just be, connect your feet to the ground. If you can immerse yourself in the trees or the water or whatever it is, I know it's a little bit harder this time of year, but whatever you can do to just be in nature. Bundle up. That's what I have to do. But it's still so important. It's so important. I think it is the number one reason we're just so disconnected from nature. And I think that that's why so many people are struggling. Number eight. You heal you. Whilst we go to healers, they are simply holding the field of potentiality for your body to heal itself. This one took me a long, a long time to learn. I thought I just needed to find the right healer. And while there is a time and a space for, it's absolutely important to find someone who's an energetic match to you. It's very important. But if you're not physically ready, if you're not emotionally ready, if you're not spiritually ready, if you haven't done the soul and spirit growth, you're not ready. You're not ready. So it doesn't matter if you have the best healer in the world. If you're not ready to receive it, what it often does is it just shoots your vibration way up but the body can't hold it. So that's what oftentimes happens when people go to really incredible healers is they'll feel amazing. It shoots their vibration up. That's going to feel really good when your level of consciousness has been shot way up. But if the body hasn't healed what it needs to heal to hold that, it will not work. So yes, the healer is important, but you play a role too, my friend. It is a co, co-creation and collaboration. Ooh. 
Whew. Nine. Some people are addicted to their problems and are not ready to change. Don't try to make people who aren't ready to change or who don't want to. It's a waste of your energy. This one is really difficult, I think, for healers and light workers and people who truly want the best for people. This was really difficult for me when I would have people that didn't receive the profound transformation I knew was waiting for them. This was really difficult because some people are, like I was saying in the last one, they haven't created the space. They haven't decided. They're still receiving whatever energetic payback that is that reinforces it. And some people actually don't want to change. They say they want to and they don't. And so being okay, if you are a leader, a light worker, a healer, being okay that not everyone is going to receive healing because some people are still addicted to their problems. And we have to be okay with that. It's not our job to heal the world. It's our job to offer the healing to those who are ready and offer the space. See, like I still have to align myself, offer the energetic space for them to heal themselves. Number 10, be the change. There's nothing more powerful and influential than becoming a higher version of yourself. This sends out a ripple effect that we will never be able to fully understand the implications and magnitude of. This is so big. This is so big. So many of us want to change the world. We want the world to change. The forces that be, the laws, the systems. But we can't. We can't change them without changing ourselves. And in changing yourself, you sent out that frequency into the universe. Like, as I received this one, it was like, what I was shown was as we change ourselves, it's like we are literally seeding that energy into the ground, into the fabrication, into the energetic matrix of our reality. So change yourself, my friend, and watch your world change. Because as your world change, you are now an emanation inspiring others to change as well. 11, decide. Decide you want something wholeheartedly. The universe stands behind decisiveness. If I'm being completely honest, this is the one that I still struggle with a lot. But every time that I make a decision and I stand behind it and I go all in, I see magic happen. It's when we're wavering. It's when we're wavering that the universe is like, okay, well, you asked for this. I gave you this opportunity. And then you're second guessing yourself. Do you want it or do you not? What do you want? <laughs> right? Decide. And I believe that there's a lot of programming that happens in childhood that makes us scared. Because ultimately, it, it means we have to trust ourselves really deeply. And in trusting ourselves really deeply, we have to trust God, source, the universe very deeply. So there's a lot there to explore if, if this feels difficult or challenging for you. And I have other episodes that I definitely recommend going back of, as far as trust and cultivating trust, because that will help you decide and become a, a better decision maker. Number 12, learn the laws of the universe. The law of attraction is just one of many powerful laws. Harness these laws understand these laws and now you are living in universal flow i think many of us learn about the law of attraction very first 
And so we just try and like, how do I get the things I want? <laughs> and it's so much more than that. The law of attraction is just one. It's just one of many. And if we can work in harmony with the laws of the universe, I believe we are unstoppable. Unstoppable. Because now we're living in, in harmony with what we are. We are made of the universe. 13. Harnessing the divine feminine is the ultimate power. Many of us believe we are feminine, but we are actually acting in our wounded masculine energy. True feminine power is magic. I believe right now on our planet, we are having a, res a resurgence of the divine feminine. We've been in very masculine paradigm. The do, and here's the thing, there's no like good, bad, right or wrong. There are simply polarities, which is a law of the universe. There must be polarities. And so as within, so without, we must have both masculine and feminine. I personally thought that I was more feminine in my energetic signature. And I realized that a lot of the things that I was doing were very masculine. And I think, again, it's not good or bad or right or wrong, but there is a, sur a resurgence of the divine feminine and the divine feminine is, it's magic. It's magic. That is that is where we see the magic. And so if you are lacking magic in your life, I would invite you to cultivate this, this energy within you deeper, to invite it in deeper. The masculine is the doing, the creating. The feminine is the receiving, the being. We need both. We need both. You can't just fully always receive. You need to do. There is some doing to be done. But if you're always in the doing and not in the being, that is where you will most likely be lacking the magic.